Hello everybody. My name is Fakhruddin Khambati and welcome to the fourth video and finally to the first demo on SSIS. As we discussed in the previous video, our requirement is this. As an input, we have received a CSV file given by a doctor's clinic. It contains some columns and some data. So we need to generate some dummy data that we can save in a CSV file, right? So let's begin with the requirements first. The data you can generate from some websites like Makaru. You can just enter the field name over here. You can give what kind of uh, type of data it is and how many rows you want to generate and download the data. So this is how you will get your dummy data. In case you have not installed the softwares required for SSIS, here is how you can do it. You have to download SQL Server from the Microsoft website and SQL Server data tools again from the Microsoft website. Once you have the CSV file with the dummy data, once you have the SQL Server installed, and SQL Server data tools installed, you are ready for this demo. Remember, the SSIS package has a source and a destination. So we have the source ready over here, which is this file with some dummy data. What about destination? We have to transfer this data into our Microsoft SQL Server database, right? So here I'm opening Microsoft SQL. I have a table that I'm going to create called patients with the same number of columns and appropriate data types. So if you want to uh, copy the data of this table, the definition of this table, pause the video over here and note it down on the SQL. I'm going to execute this query and this data is this table is created. Once I have my source, my destination ready, I will open the SQL Server Data Tools. This is the tool that we are going to use for MSPI. So people, here is the first look of it. I will go to New Project and I will see business intelligence. Remember the three pillars in MSPI, SSAS, SSIS, SSRS. What we are learning right now is SSIS. I'm going to select the integration services project because I don't want to go via a wizard and I will just give a demo name over here called as demo or first demo. And yes, I want to create a directory for the solution and I will say OK. So it will get us something like this. We have SSIS toolbox, we have package, we have properties, solution explorer over here. So let's talk about what is SSIS toolbox first. It will have certain components that we can use in our project, in our SSIS package. For example, just look at this particular highlighted component, data flow task. I'm going to drag and drop it over here. And you see the tab which is selected is control flow. I will double click on this task. Did you notice something? Let me do it again. I'm double clicking on data flow task. Did you notice something? Yes. The tab changed from control flow to data flow and the components in the SSIS toolbox also changed. One last time, right? Okay. Now I will minimize all these sections out here. I will go back to my CSV file because this is the source. 
Now looking at the data flow ta tab over here and looking at the sections out here, what section seems to be appropriate? Source. And what kind of source I have? Do I have an Excel file? Do I have a, a OLEDB source, a XML source? No, I have a CSV file. So I will select a flat file source and I will drag and drop it. Right? Now what do we have to do? I have to transfer this data from the flat file, from this file into SQL, into this particular table that I have created. So what seems more appropriate for destination is this. And I will see what kind of destination I want. Uh, I will go with OLEDB destination. You can also select SQL Server destination. In the coming videos, I will also talk about the difference between OLEDB destination and SQL Server destination. So here we have two components. You see cross marks over here. Why do we see cross marks? Because these components do not know anything by themselves. We have to teach these components step by step about what they have to do. Otherwise, they are just sitting there as line components. They don't know what to do. So I will right click out here and I will click on edit. Okay, I will right click and I will click on edit. It will give me a window out here. And it will ask me for connection manager. It is nothing but I have to browse to the location where I have saved my flat file source that I am going to do now I can give a name to it demo source and I can give a description to it I can browse and I will go over here I have a CSV file demo data I will select now all I have done is I have browsed to the folder where my file was saved I selected that file and I clicked on OK and here you see when you go from general to column you will see all the data arranged systematically look at how the data was look at how it has displayed it already amazing right we will go to advance we are not going to talk about it now but we are going to use it if we have to change the data type of any of these components and we can of course preview the data and if everything looks good i click on ok and i come back to the flat file source editor i will go to columns I will just review all the columns that has come in. It has populated all this automatically. I have not done anything to manually intervene into it. And error output, again, I am not going to talk about it right now, but we will discuss on it in the coming videos. So, back to connection manager. Everything is okay. I click on OK. And you see the red cross from here is gone. Now OLEDB destination, but before I go here, I will click on it, the flat file source, and I'm going to drag this, you will see two arrows out here, one is blue and one is red, you will see it in all the components except for destination. So the blue arrow, I'm going to drag it and I'm going to tell it that my flat file you pick the data from whatever place I have shown to you while browsing that file and you insert that data in this particular destination. But again, this destination right now does not know what to do. We have not taught it. So let's teach the destination what it has to do. Again, the way I right clicked on and clicked on edit for flat file source, I will do the same for OLEDB destination it 
will open the same kind of a pop-up window which has connection manager mapping error output and i will go first and i will tell it that i want a new connection manager i will delete the existing one if i have just because i want to show you the correct way and i will click on new and it will ask me for server name how can you get server name you have to come over here you have to click on connect and you have to get the server name from here once you have server name it will ask you which database i select the database process connection okay and then okay and do okay again the moment you define the database over here or sql server over here it will automatically populate the tables which are present in that particular database we just created one table which was patients right so it's picking that patients up automatically and i will go to mappings now remember what i have done i have just shown it that mr oledb destination editor you have to go to this particular sql server and you have to go to this particular database and you have to pick this particular table and then i will go to mapping as long as we have the source and destination data with the exact same column names for example for id in the flat file i had id for email i had email and so on if i have exact same names in my destination for example id is id email is email and amount is amount it will automatically map the source column with the destination columns if i have something which is email over here and just e over here or let's say last over here and last name over here it will not automatically map it in that case what i have to do is i have to select this and i have i have to show it which column is its twin just drag and drop to the appropriate column that's it once the mapping is done mapping is very important by the way once the mapping is done i click on okay so here it is showing some kind of an error still this i have induced the error on purpose look closely what does it say it says column first cannot convert between unicode and non unicode string string data types let's go to sql and this is the first it's talking about and uh, if you see the data type the first has been given is n var care the others have var care uh, amount obviously has money date of birth has date but the last and the first name has n var care so we need to tell this component to convert the data type accordingly otherwise the destination will not pick it so we will go to the source and we will right click remember all the time we click on edit but this time we will not click on edit instead we will click on show advanced editor it will open a new kind of a pop up window where you will see some tabs ignore all the tabs for now just go to input and output properties when you go to input and output properties just go to output columns out here first name and last name are over here we need to give the data type accordingly right now it's string we need to change it to dt wstr unicode string why because our source has n var care for first and last columns so this is where i change for first and i'll go to last name and i will make same change again dwstr uh, and then i will click on okay and you see the cross over here is gone wow all i have to do now is run this project and to run i can either press f5 on my keyboard or i will click on the start 
button out here. When you run it, notice that it's going to show some errors and it says that thousand rows have been copied from flat file source into OLEDB connection. One more thing that I need you to uh, focus on. Initially, we had five tabs out here, right? Out of the five tabs, we talked about control flow and data flow. But when we run the project, it also creates one additional tab called progress. This tab is very, very helpful if we want to check the errors or the progress of our project. And you see it shows everything that it has done, how much time it has taken and every single step that it had gone through. And data flow task on the control flow says a green arrow in data flow task. In the data flow tab, we have a green arrow over here. If in case there was something wrong in it, it would give us a red cross over here. So this was our very first very own project. Let's check if the data has been populated in the Microsoft SQL Server or not. Uh, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to do select to start from state. And yes, 1000 rows have come up. Wow. So I hope uh, this uh, video was helpful in understanding, you know, how you can process an input from a CSV file or a stored file into your database file. Repeat the video if you did not get a certain part out of it. Try to change the data types accordingly from source and destination and then correct your mistakes. This is how you are going to learn by trial and error. So we just learn how we can create a new project in SSIS. Wow. And how to access SSIS toolbox, control flow and data flow tabs data flow task, flat file source, and OLEDB destination. But, hey trade on, that's me. I missed it. What did I miss? Remember the ETL is about extract, transfer, and load. But we just saw two things out here. We just saw extract from here, and then it loaded in here. So it extracted data from this file and it loaded the data in the database. Where is the transform gone? Yes, that is missed. But in the next section, we will do the first attempt towards modifying the source data as per the requirement. So coming up next is what we are going to do in terms of transforming data. We are going to modify the first and the last names. You see right now the first and the last names out here, only the first character is uppercase, the rest are lowercase. We are going to make everything in the first name and last name uppercase when this data goes in the SQL server. More. So I hope you learned something new today and you are excited about SSIS as much as I am. Stay tuned. We are going to do a lot of fun working on SSIS in upcoming videos. Goodbye and take care.